movie was I watching again? Dude, where's my car? Oh, right. Thanks for the reminder. Dude, where's my car? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies that say the title in the film. Gentlemen, welcome to Fight Club. For this list, we've looked at instances when a movie's title is blatantly made a part of the movie script. Soylent Green is made out of people. To be in contention, the title has to be made up of two or more words, and we aren't including character names. We got a Black Hawk down, we got a Black Hawk down. Number 10, the world is not enough. If he's true in what he says, then just what is enough for James Bond? It may be one of the less memorable movies within the franchise, but this has to be one of Bond's best comebacks. Pretty thing. You had her too? 007 isn't exactly a stranger to the odd title drop, although the words don't always come directly from his mouth. But this one is delivered particularly well. I could have given you the world. The world is not enough. As Electra proves more dangerous than desirable, what better way to shut her up than with the Bond family mantra? Foolish sentiment. Family motto. Yeah, we know, this isn't the first Bond film to make the title a catchphrase. What have you to kill? Number nine, do the right thing. There was a nice setup to our first entry, but in Do the Right Thing, we're taken a little by surprise, in a good way. This is the mayor talking. All right, all right. Mookie's going about his daily pizza business when he's pulled to the side by the mayor for a short and sweet heart to heart. Doctor, come on, what, what? Always do the right thing. The guy doesn't have to say too much because the little that he does say is heard loud enough. That's it. I got it. I'm gone. It's worldly wisdom at its purest and best. You probably didn't think that movie titles made good philosophies. Until now. <laughs> Number 8. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind In my reading, I've come across some I thought you might like too. In terms of words and syllables, this is the longest title to make our countdown. Oh, and there's this other one I like. It's by Pope Alexander, and it goes... Alexander Pope? Yeah. <laughs> so burdensome was the potential for this poetic sentence, it might have needed a crowbar to get it into the script. But instead, it was built in beautifully. It's just that I told myself not to say Pope Alexander and sound like a dope, and then I go ahead and well, say it's, it's no big deal. You're such a sweetheart. Kirsten Dunst is blessed with an especially attractive accent, and as she recites a part of the Alexander Pope poem on which the title is based, the audience is treated to a tingle or two down their spine. The quote goes, how happy is the blameless vessel's lot? The world forgetting by the world forgot. Eternal sunshine of a spotless mind. Each prayer accepted, and each wish resigned. Number seven, The Aviator. A simpler title next, but an equally emotionally effective use of it within the film. Leonardo DiCaprio plays Howard Hughes in this Martin Scorsese movie, and in this particular scene, things are starting to take a turn for the worse. Go down! Hughes was on top of the world before his fortunes quite literally plummeted. A plane crash over Beverly Hills creates a war zone-like setting for DiCaprio to squeeze out his identity before being set upon by a photographer. It's fame in all its fickleness. Howard Hughes, the aviator. <laughs> Number six, Pineapple Express. <gasps> Most of us knew the premise of this movie before we took our seats in the cinema to see it, but not so many of us had a clue about the title reference. What's it called? Pineapple Express. Pineapple Express. Yes. It wasn't a big reveal, but when James Franco explains Pineapple Express as an out-of-this-world variety of weed, we feel about as satisfied as its smoker, which is very satisfied. You know, this airflow that comes from Hawaii and Canada, and it gets the dirt, mixes it in with the weed in a very special way, it's actually very scientific, I won't go into it right now. The reproductive description of the drug that follows is enough to strike a craving in almost anybody. That crazy northern light stuff I had, and the super red espresso snowflake, met and had a baby, and by some miracle those two babies met and f this would be the shit. The big birds. smell -o vision would have been very good right about now. Oh my god, I just want to shove it up my nose and have that smell all day. Number five, Brokeback Mountain. Jack Twist. Ennis. You folks should stop at Ennis? Delmar. Another emotionally charged entry as we ascend to top spot, as Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger try to make sense of their love within the very shadow of the place that has seen it. I wish I knew how to quit you. Brokeback Mountain would once have been thought of with fondness by Gyllenhaal's character Jack, but in this scene, it only breeds frustration. What I don't know, all them things that I don't know, could get 
you killed if I come to know them. I ain't joking. The switch from it being everything that he and Ennis have to all that they've got is a heartbreaking turning point and an expert title drop. We could have had a good life together. A real good life. Had us a place of our own. But you didn't want it, Ennis. So what we got now is Brokeback Mountain. Number four, Hot Tub Time Machine. Check it out. They must have fixed it. Here we have a line that almost every cinema goer has heard, even if you haven't seen the movie. The hot tub time machine concept is so ambiguous an oxymoron that you only need to have seen the trailer for this film's title to stick in your head. It must be some kind of hot tub time machine. Craig Robinson delivers it perfectly as he sums up the confusion felt by everyone else in the room and becomes the asshole that Clark Duke's Jacob didn't want to be. Do I really gotta be the asshole that says we got in this thing and went back in time? As ridiculous as it is, we're with him 100%. Oh man, you guys gotta get in here, it's gonna f***ing change you! Number 3. Full Metal Jacket Sir, yes sir! Private Pyle may have lost his mind more than a little in our next scene, but he's remembered to title drop, and he does so spectacularly. Hi. Joker. Here, the soldier snaps, and he takes his problems into the bathroom, as is typical in a Stanley Kubrick film. Perfectly drilled, but drilled to insanity, he's locking, loading, and laying down the law. 762 millimeter. Full metal jacket. Full metal jacket is just one of many memorable lines in this sequence, as we see the very whites of the guy's eyes and Sergeant Hartman badmouths his last. Didn't mommy and daddy show you enough attention when you were a child? Number two, face off. Wait, you get looking. Some of our title drops are a singular event, but not this one. It's coming off. Face. As John Travolta and Nicolas Cage run us all around in circles by trading one another's faces, the call to end this madness is repeated a fair few times. I'd like to take his, his face off. On the one hand, the title is muttered too many times to be natural, but on the other, it's an indication of the madness behind the mask. You want to take his face? Yes. His face off. Oh. It's almost full marks to face off. <laughs> what a predicament! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. And when I arrive at my destination, I am gonna kill Bill. What was his name? The departed. Miles Kennefick. Got the job to forge UMass transcript. This is England, and this is England, and this is England. Number one, Back to the Future. All right, get the DeLorean and get ourselves back to the future. Our winner is a title scripted into its series on multiple occasions, with each utterance as satisfying as the one that preceded it. Right, so we go back to the future, and we stop there from stealing the time machine. The concept of going back to the future is so brilliantly just beyond our everyday understanding of time that whenever Doc Brown says it out in the open, we can't help but be thrilled. Next Saturday night, we're sending you back to the future. It's one of the more dynamic movie titles, and it makes for some memorable movie moments. Oh, I can't be. Just sent you back to the future. Yeah. Oh, I know you did send me back to the future, but I'm back. It would top this podium in any temporal dimension, and as far as title drops go, it's exemplary. You've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the future. Do you agree with our list? Where's your car, dude? Which movie title drop is your favorite? Where are the Avengers? For more satisfying top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. It's called male bonding, okay? Haven't you even seen Wild Hogs?